soccer, right? Tommy's ball. No, I'm kidding. Coach, I don't think we talked about baseball. All right, here we go. So let's talk about let's talk about today. So process day is going to be like 20 minutes a week. We put into our brains 20, 25 minutes, and we're going to eliminate distractions here. So make sure that phones are off, all that stuff. Anything that's a distractions away. We're going to be willing and to honestly evaluate yourself and treat this as important or more than other baseball skills. A lot of multi-sport guys in here too. So this is really good for multi-sport guys because this goes into every sport. We're going to talk about baseball. The goal is to become better baseball players, but these, these work for any sport that you're playing in any situation. Uh, and then ultimately it goes beyond the field or the rank or whatever. So let's review last week. Goals, and, and what I would suggest guys, as I'm going along, Jot notes down on your uh, note cards I just gave you. The smartest people in the world are the people that write stuff down. Okay? Do we all need is all phases need. of your life. Goals need to be limited in number. Goals should be prioritized. Look in the now, one pitch at a time. Uh, you need to write down your goals and revisit them often. So this is really important that we know the basic goal process. Um, we can't have, we talked about it today, we can't have the goal of being the clown and the guy that's like the authoritarian. We have to make sure we have the goals and they're focused uh, on where we want to get. We're going to talk about those goals a little later. Again, everything comes from this book, The Mental Game of Baseball. Um, it's like our curriculum, so to speak. Basically, it's a great book that I read about baseball and the mind, and I'm delivering it to you guys. So a lot of the stuff is copied straight out of it. It's not something I came up with necessarily. Uh, some of it is. Okay, the process. Day two, defeating the intruder. So what we have to do is establish what is an intruder while we're, get, while we're putting together our goals and while we're performing, okay? An intruder is anything that enters your mind which creates distraction from your action goals. So if my goal is see ball, hit ball, is there something creeping into my mind that's distracting from that? Let's talk about some examples of self-talk or that you would hear. A loser might say, I know they expect me to hit 300, I better be able to or else I'll get cut, or else I'll get benched, or else my mom won't love me, or else I'll get dumped, or else. So we have to understand that that's the, the mindset of, quote, a loser. Someone that's going to be not like a horrible person, but someone is prone to lose in contests. I better make this shot, or else. Whatever it is, in whatever sport it is, that's what we have to see. Winners say, I know what I want to do, I know how to do it. I want to make this shot. I'm going to make sure that I follow this technique. I want to make this pitch. I need to make. I need to hit this ball. I want to hit the low fastball. I know how I need to, or low inside. I know I need to speed my hands up and get out in front. Okay, whatever it might be. Whatever it might be. The loser has to be the Yankee. Uh, that is a good call. Okay, so I was waiting for somebody to call. <laughs> this is actually Mickey Mantle, I'm not a loser. I just found a great picture of Mickey Mantle. Throw it his hat. So, or is, he's, that, that's, yeah. that, that's his uh, helmet, sorry, batting helmet back then. That, I thought well, that yeah. was like a ghost. No, no, so, and then Ted Williams, of course. So, yeah, no, no I, will, I will make some positive examples of the Yankees here in a minute. So, <laughs> you know. Today is all about you. It's kind of selfish almost, but it has to be, because your goals come from within. We just talked about it in seventh hour, but it is not Coach Davis's goals for my life. And you have to, I am just, I'm a blip on your guys' radar screen. In years from now, you guys are going to be off playing sports or having families or working, and you guys will not have um, me in your life. And I, you, I, I hope you don't consistently remember me. I hope you're working on, on your own lives, you know what I mean? I don't want my, my experiences to be your experiences. You have to come up with your own goals. Hey, just be careful about that camera, guys, and we're filming for people who can't be here. So what are, what are some important things about you? We have to look at ourselves and know some important stuff about us. First of all, having fun is an important need. Guys, we play baseball. We have fun. We play football, basketball, hockey. We play these things. We don't work them. I hate people who say, let's go do work. Go do work. Why are you saying that? Go do play. Go have fun. Now, we did work in the way. That's the discipline. That's kind of like the payment. You guys ever go on a vacation someday when you're an adult, you're going to have to like save money to do that. You have to go do work, and then you say, oh, here, go play. Sports, guys, at your time in life is play. That's, that's what's so beautiful about it. It's play. Don't let it become work. When it, it's going to be hard at times, but don't let it be work. Avoid it being work. 
We're going to have fun, because it's an important human need to have fun. We also need value. We also need to feel that, uh, that we're worthwhile. That's also an important need. So just wearing the jersey, just being around the team, just that's not enough for us as humans. We need to have uh, value and feel like we're doing something. So what happens is a lot of people bounce between these two and they tend to gravitate towards one or the other. Maybe you have more fun and you don't focus on the hard work and the discipline. And then some people over here focus just on the hard work and discipline. Don't have as much fun. They make it hard to be around. So you have two competing schools of thought where you can be goofy or you can be the, the, the hard dude, just angry. And really, for peak performance, you have to find the happy medium where I'm having fun and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, but I'm also working really hard. And, the, and I have value in that hard work. And I'm working for other people and all that stuff. You know, we're going to talk about that. When you get into that happy medium between fun and value, you get what we call in the zone. Okay, you guys play, some of you, especially basketball guys, you guys have those days where you can't miss, right? I hope. At some point, you've had a day where <laughs> everything's day. going right. And for, for me, for me, it was snowboarding. Like, there would be days on the mountain, I just couldn't fall. Like, it was like every trick I tried, Stop. it was just like, boom, yeah, I had bolts. We'd say it was the day you have bolts, just because underneath your feet are bolts. And so, like, you just, boom. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that feels awesome. And you're learning, you're having fun. You're having fun, but you're learning, and you're landing. It's just can't miss that days. Guy, that, guy so that, that guy is Gary Carter. And he yeah. said that, I think I could come to home plate, stand on my head, and still get a hit when I'm feeling like this. And Gary Carter was a, a all-star with the Expos and the Mets. Um, and so this dude, he was, and he was one of those like real positive guys. He was always kind of having fun. I want to talk about him and say, here you go, Pete, this is for you, in the zone. You Who's must work hard and with intention to stay in the zone. Who's that guy? That's Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio. What's he doing right there? What's he in the middle of? Hitting. Striking out. Hitting. <laughs> what's he probably doing? What's his, what's his uh, famous streak? Anybody know? Uh, 5,900. No. no, no, no. 56 hits in a row in games. 56 games with hits. 56 game hitting streak. No one's even come close since Joe DiMaggio. Okay? One of the greatest streaks in the history of baseball this year. What's that? He's not wearing helmets. They weren't helmets back then. Wait, unsafe. The other guys? unsafe. Okay, so let's focus. Let's focus. So, he, you have to work long and intentional and hard to stay in the zone. You can't just find your way in the zone and then stay there. Something's got to keep you in the zone mentally. And that's what we call control. The player who can retain his joy for baseball is the one who has not let others' needs intrude upon his own. So in other words, I don't go up and pitch and say, I need to throw this strike for my team. I need to throw this strike for Coach Davis. I need to hit this ball for my mom. I need to hit this ball for my dad. Do you say, I will throw a strike. And I have joy doing it. I will get a hit. And I have joy doing it. You have to find that in whatever sport you do. Basketball, baseball, football. All those are super important. Keep the joy of the game. It's a game. Play it. Don't work it. Okay, so that's one thing we're going to talk a lot about. So, we have these intruders now. All these things taking you out of the zone. How are we staying in the zone? This is a picture of Gary Carter again. Looking kind of beat up there. And then a okay. fan looking crazy. And the fans would start, he had, a, he had a slump one year. And the fans, everywhere he went, would start chanting his batting average when he dropped below 200. Oh 195. 195. One, and so it just got worse. And he was like, he was distracted by it. And he admitted this. And it took some self-work. It took what we're about to talk about now to help get him out of that. So let's talk about some of the expectations where we have these intruders coming from. So who has expectations of you? Coaches? Yep. Players? Other players on this team? Parents? Other people that don't play baseball? Your peers? The media for some of you? So who has expectations of you? Coaches, players, parents? All these people do. Now some of them are aligned with your goals. The the I my goal, I used this example earlier. I'm gonna I want Dylan to throw every time he's second base, throw to chest. Throws the chest. Dylan should have that goal as well. If Dylan does not have that goal as a coach, I need to find somebody who does. But that's gotta be Dylan's goal first. It can't just be my goal for him. Otherwise, he's like, ah, Coach Davis wants me to throw us the chest. <laughs> just in the sky, yeah, right? It, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean as much. It doesn't mean as much. But it's your goal. You have to find your goal. So sometimes they are going to align. Sometimes they're not. 
Sometimes they use this example today again in seventh hour. Sometimes the expectation is that you won the game, you're going to come party with us. And we have to be really careful about that type of stuff. So these expectations are real and imagined. Okay, so sometimes I get up with coaches, or as a player, and I'm up to bat. Man, the expectations, I get a hit right now, otherwise I'm going to get benched. I don't, those are the type of players, we need to change our mindset and say, I get to hit right now. What's my action goal? C ball, hit ball. It's maybe, maybe I'm anticipating middle. Maybe it's a 2-0 count. My action goal becomes anticipate middle. And now I'm just ramping up and I'm going to swing nasty and just blasting out of the park. Okay? But what I love about this image is that these are all the gears like working outside of your life. Parents, media, ESPN, KTVU, all the, all the different news outlets, all the different friends, teachers talking to you in class. And then there's one gear, one red gear, that's yours. You control that. Which one's spinning which is the question. Which one's spinning which? What do you let? What do you let affect you? Do you let all these things out here affect that your core? Or do you use your mentality to say, hey, I'm going to see the ball, hit the ball, and then people can then go write about my great hitting? Is there a real question? Uh, what part, part of the brain is that? It's the hippocampus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the ability. To, so, how do you defeat that expectation of parents, of players, of peers, of coaches? Legit expectations, maybe, but oftentimes we have to be very careful to say some things that we have to know that we agree 100% with that expectation. The ability to construct your own goals and eventually your self identity is key to defeating this issue. You have to know who you are. Because, God, I mean, you're all at the age now where you can start honestly asking yourself, who am I? Well, what, what do I stand for? What do I believe in? Is it the expectation of home? Expectation of school? Ex may, maybe you align with that, and that's great. But you are going to have stress and anxiety when you're taking on board other people's expectations. If someone has, if Justin has an expectation, a coach has an expectation, Justin, you're going to be the best cross-country skier ever. Okay? Uh, and Justin's like, I'm smart. I don't know if I want to cross-country <laughs> ski, right? So... But just he's gonna have anxiety, especially when he sees that person. All they talk about, hey, you cross country skiing? Hey. And I brought this up in seventh down. I see it all the time. When someone's not lifting, and I see them in the hallway. Some of you guys in this room, I've had this conversation with. Hey, why aren't you in the weight room? We need to have you there because right there at, your, at that moment, your goal is not to be in the weight room, getting stronger and safer. Your goal is somewhere else, and you know that my expectation for you is to get stronger and safer, and so you have anxiety when those collide. So you have to have your own goals and know who you are. If your own goal isn't to get stronger, safer, and play the best baseball you can, and your self-identity isn't that, then this is a great time to analyze that and say, eh, I don't know if I should be here. I quit. <laughs> I, I just get up in the middle. Yeah. So what's another intruder? This one's easy for us guys, especially nowadays. For whatever reason, it just, maybe not nowadays, it's just kids, high schoolers, I know I was a bit of a worrier. But you'll, you'll see it. I mean, there's a lot of worry. I don't want people to live in a world of worry um, about anything. Worry, uh, there's, there's genuine concern. We're going to get to that in a second. And then there's worry. Greg Maddox, Cy Young winner, over and over and over again. I believe he won with the Cubs in like 90. Gets traded to the Braves. Everybody said, well, the Braves are playing great baseball. Your nerves, your, the pressure is on you now to perform for a World Series contender. Um, and everybody's like, you're going to crumble, you're going to worry. And he came in and won another side, won a few with the Braves. Oh, it was an awesome pitcher. Finally won a World Series in 96 or 7. When was that, Pete? Do you know? Mm, they, okay, it was, they beat the Yankees, I know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, it's such a low blow. Low blow, I'm sorry. I, do that. I didn't do that at first. Okay. Actually, did they beat the Yankees? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Anyway, I just go out and do the best I can. You can hurt yourself by worrying too much about other things. I get mentally ready, and I try not to worry. How do you beat worry? Getting mentally ready. For me as a coach, for football is an easier example for me to use. When I get excited to call plays, how do I not worry about, oh, we're going to lose. Or, oh, they're going to you know, they're gonna criticize your play calling. I have a plan, and I go on with a plan. I create that. If you're a pitcher, one of the things we're going to talk about is a pitching plan this year. You are going into each game with a plan. I'm going to pound the zone. It might be the same plan every game. 
but you're going to go on with a plan. And if you're a catcher, you're going to have that. Set, you're going to have a plan. And if you're an outfielder or whatever fielder you are, you're going to have a plan for that position. Maybe you're going to have a plan at the plate. Uh, everything we do will be planned. That helps. That helps destroy some worry. We can use Greg Maddox for example. Another intruder. Big time one. This one's prevalent all the way, all across the board. Pleasing others. It's hard to know how to please some people. You can't. You can please some people. It's easy to know, or it's impossible to please them all. You can't please everybody. I think you guys are mature and old enough to know that that's impossible to do. Okay? It's essential to know that the attempt should not be made. Do not try to please everybody. There's only one person you really can please. Yourself. And in this case, it's yourself. And in this case, it's because you're following your goal that you've created from within. It's kind of like a broken record, and it almost sounds selfish. But I'm going, to get to, I'm going to show you why this is actually some of the most selfless things you can do. You have to know that you can't please everybody and that it's not even, it, do not try. Oh, follow your goals. Follow your goals. So this gets into peer pressure to some degree. If you want to, especially talking about pleasing everybody. An athlete take on peer pressure that is not expressed and quite often is just assumed. So if, by better players. So if you're the best, this is where it comes in, team captain stuff. You guys are all in this room because you're the best varsity baseball players in the West. Out of 2,000 people, or 1,800 people, you guys are the best baseball players in this room. And then there's Justin. Well, I haven't seen Justin play baseball yet. And I hope he is, and we'll find out. Okay? Oh, <laughs> so it's off the stream. So what happens is you hear this, and this happens all the time in football. Okay? I'll put the team on my back. And you saw it in baseball last year with... Oh. with uh, 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 like Miller. Dalton, thank you. Dalton <laughs> Jones, yeah. <laughs> That's all video, too. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Edit it all out. Yeah, so, geez, you'll hear this You'll hear this quite often, I'll put the team on my back. And we need to replace that with, I can do what it is I do. For example, uh, you know what? I think I saw a great example of this. We all did. Dejan. Dejan could have said in the moment and thought only about through that last play, going into overtime. I'm going to put the team on my back. He could have thought that. But I bet if you went inside Dejan's brain, he was thinking, I can beat this guy down the sideline and make a layup and get an easy shot. It wasn't an easy shot. It was one of the best shots I've ever seen, one of the best individual efforts. I've ever. But if he was focused only on, I'm going to put the team on my back, put the team on my back, he would have made it halfway down the court. He would have slowed down, his reaction time, his anxiety, all that stuff. He thought exactly what he could do, and he went and did it. In front of all those people, he tuned it out. He was in the zone. That was, his, that was as much in the zone as you're going to see in high school athletics. He had a job, and he just said, I can do my job. And that's where we all need to find ourselves, regardless of how. And this is high performance, and maybe you're the best at what you do. Maybe you're not, but you have to keep coming back with, I can do whatever it is I can do. And that's why it's really important to analyze yourself, to evaluate yourself. So let's look at somebody, an example. We have Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy uh, was an MVP year in, year out. Known as like the coolest guy, nice guy. Had a lot of fun playing baseball. Really chill. Joe Torre was his manager in 84, I want to say. And uh, that year, they were, Murphy was having a frustrating year. Guys got hurt. Uh, the team was down. And everybody was expecting Dale Murphy to rally the troops and be the guy. Carry the team. Put the team on his back. And it didn't go that way. He was having a tough season, so I'm going to read this part. One night in Los Angeles, Murphy came to bat late in the game with his team down one run to the Dodgers. The Braves had a runner on third, the tying run. The Dodgers brought a rookie pitcher into the game. Murphy struck out on three pitches. To say Murphy's next act was uncharacteristic of him is comparable to saying it's warmer at the equator than at the North Pole. Murphy went back into the dugout and beat up the water cooler. I'm, I'm feeling pressure he said later. The confirmation was unnecessary. He was trying to do everything and be everything for the team, a behavior of which his manager at the time, Joe Torre, was well aware. Torre advised the center fielder to play for himself, not for others. The advice was followed. The quality of the performance was very positively affected. Really interesting, right? This, goes, this seems to be in con, like complete contradiction to being selfless. Play for yourself. And here's what I'll say, and this goes back to kind of a lot of the stuff we're talking about. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of other people. 
This is going to be something you see your whole life. If you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to adequately care for those you love. Well, this, this happens so much in like service industries of, or, or like people industries of teachers, of doctors. Those type of people can pour endless amounts of hours. I could spend all day at West and still have stuff to do tomorrow. I could spend my every waking minute finding something to do with baseball, with the weight room, with football, with whatever. But at the end of the day, I have to take care of myself so that I can come here and be intentional with my time for you guys and for everybody else. That's what we all have to find, is that ability to take care of ourselves. So in baseball, I can't be the pitcher, the batter, the fielder, and the umpire all at once. Everybody plays their own job. If I'm in center field, I have a job. I can do my job in center field. No one's asking me to do extra. No one's expecting me to do extra. We're only, I, it doesn't matter if they were expecting it. I know what I can do, and I know what I will do. And that's how we have to think about that when we become high achievers. When we do, and even when we're not, quote, high achieving. That's especially when we have to go back into this. If I know I'm skilled, but I'm having struggles throwing a ball to second base, okay? I need to go back and say, what can I do? I can throw the ball to second base. What do I need to do? Maybe work with coach on a specific drill. The other, the other one is accolades. A lot of guys in here are really good, okay? We have some really good ball players in here that are going to be, that are good and are going to be even better. You guys are all going to grow this year. And so, what a, here's a great example. Eric Davis, lot, lots of high praise. When he came in, people were calling him like the next Willie Mays and stuff. He had a great foot speed. First player to hit 50, uh, to steal 50 bases and hit 30 home runs. Um, and he did that at 84, okay? He had, or I'm sorry, 87. He came into, this, into the league in 21. He had injuries, forced him out in 94. In 84, he came into the league, he was at 21. Correct. Yeah. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. He said in 21. No, I'm sorry. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. So this is what he said. This is his quote about coming into the league and being really, really good. And this quote's really important. I don't try to live up to anybody's expectations. You can't play that way. I've heard nice things about me before. It's tough when you're a young guy and everyone expects so much from you. All of us have to learn. Even when you're a success, everything is a process. If you go out and throw a no-no today, you still need to learn. Because tomorrow, five days later, you're in the rotation again. If you go out and hit four for four, you still need to learn because tomorrow you're going to face a different style of pitcher. So these are things that are really important. Well, let's go on with Mr. Davis here. In 94, injuries force him to retire, but he comes back, he fights through injuries, is the comeback player of the year in 96, and then in 98 has his best statistical year despite having colon cancer and battling through that. And this is all from a guy who, as a very young man, was told, you're the best ever, you're the best. No one's faster or stronger than you. And there was a series of these guys coming up. You know, probably steroids help guys like Barry Bonds and stuff, but Barry Bonds is another one. You're the best ever. No one's been as fast and as strong as you. And so these fast, strong guys were coming up, and people were like, no one's been this way before. Well, this guy, he bowed out for a while and realized it's all process. And he kept fighting, 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 he kept learning and learning and learning. And had not only a great beginning to his career, but a pretty remarkable o overcoming some odds at the end. And he works now, I believe, for the Reds as a, as a scout or as an instructor. So now what we have to do is, is figure out our SMART goals, our result goals, our, where we want to be goals. And, and most of us have come up with these already, but it's good to analyze them with the SMART thing. We have to take responsibility ourselves for setting our goals and expectations. That's understood, right? No one else is setting our goals. I am not setting Duffy's goals or Dylan's or Dice's. We're, these are your goals. And SMART goals are the result goals. That's like, the, remember we talked last week about Pete Rose hitting 4,192 hits? That's or 29, that's, uh, there's 92, doesn't matter. Um, that's the goal, the SMART goal is where you want to end up. I want to play college football. I want to play college basketball. I want to play hockey. I want to, I want to go to college. I want to graduate from the military academy. I want to, whatever it is, this is the big time goal, the SMART goal. And you have to ask yourself, this is really take notes on this, is your big master goal specific? Is it measurable? attainable, relevant, and is it on some, is it timely or is it on a timetable of some sort? So let's start with specific. I'm going to use an example of a marathon. I want to run a marathon. Is that specific? Yeah, kind of. I can make it more specific. I want to run the Moose's Tooth Marathon. Sweet. Specific, 
specific goal? Is it measurable? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. Or I didn't. Okay? Is did it attainable? You? Yes. So I've done it before. I know I've done it before. I can do it again. So it's attainable. I have the ability to do it. Is it relevant? Um, is it relevant for me to run a marathon? I think it keeps me in good shape and gives me something to look forward to. So in that sense, it's relevant. Is it relevant and, and it keeps me healthy? It's the taking care of myself so I can help other people. So I'm going to give it a yes on that. Okay. Is it time-based? I'm going to do it in June. Or I'll do the Moose's Tooth one in August, which everyone works out best. So there's one in June and August. So that's a goal for me. That's a smart goal. That's a big picture goal. Now, in order to do that, I have to have action goals. We talked about those last week. See the ball, hit the ball. So for me, this is run today. Run today. Eat healthy. Run today. Eat healthy. Run today. Action goals. Telling me what to do and how I'm going to accomplish this goal. Okay? I have a plan. I have charted it out. I have a plan that eliminates worry. I don't got to worry about things because I know I follow my plan. I follow my plan instead of action goals. For you guys, you're young and you're starting to develop this stuff. And it's important for you to think about these things. What are your SMART goals? I want to be the best baseball player ever. Well, what does the best baseball player ever look like? Is it a pitcher? Is it a catcher? Is it a first baseman? I don't know. So you got to be specific. I want to strike out 20 people this year for the team. Okay, boom. There you go. You got something. So SMART goals, really important. So what you're doing today, and we're going to go down and close up shop here. What you're doing today is you're going to write two the three specific examples of expectations on you that are not your own. These come from coaches, parents, peers, elsewhere. It's the gray cogs in that picture. It's something else outside of you. These expectations could be, we're going to party, we're going to talk certain ways about certain people, we're going to live a lifestyle a different way, we're going to, whatever it is. We're not going to work hard, you know what, we're going to goof around. My value is to goof around more than just to to get work done when work needs to be done. Uh, I'm going to be negative, you know, uh, uh, whatever it is. Find an expectation that's outside of you that you don't agree with. And there's so many of them, okay? I can think of quite a few about myself. I'd be pretty negative about the way people look at me. And I, I think I'm a nice guy, you know? But people have expectations of me that sometimes I just say, sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go down that path. Um, write a SMART goal, where do you want to be? Write two to three specific action goals that help you achieve this. So you have to have a few specific action goals. I want to, I mean, I, I talked to Duffy a little bit, he says he wants to throw a no-no at some point, okay? So that's a great SMART goal, but it's, it's maybe this year, it could be, he could, I want to throw a no-hitter this year. I want to throw a no-hitter by the time baseball is done, whatever it might be. And then he takes action goals. Let's find out those smart goals, but he has to have those action goals. I'm going, I'm throw low strikes, throw low strikes, okay, whatever it might be. Those are the action goals that you need to have, um, and you need to write two or three of those down, and then revisit those throughout the week. So I want you guys to make sure you guys get that done uh, at some point this evening. It doesn't need to be right now. You might need to think about a good smart goal, and then think about a few good action goals. And lastly, I know what I want to do and how to do it. If you have... You, in order to be a selfless player, in order to do all the things we want, to have fun, to work hard, to value other people, we have to start with, I know what I want to do. And if what I want to do isn't consistent with Coach Davis's expectations, I probably should do some work on going, well, why am I so off from Coach Davis? If it is what I want to do, I need to start creating action steps. And this is so important, guys, that I'm getting the opportunity to coach you guys, and, and, and I'm blessed with that. But if you don't choose the, I'm going to be at 7th hour, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to be focused, all these things that I will do, then what ends up happening is you just have anxiety. And so you need to start work to work through the anxiety, which makes you tighten up and not play well. Start thinking about who you are and your goals. All right, dudes.